Hi, I'm Jared Bentley, and you're watching the Johnson City Press Week in Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. Hurricane Irma has finally run its course, causing billions of dollars worth of damage and wreaking havoc along the coastline and making its way inland. East Tennessee felt the effects of Irma with power outages, uh, felled trees, and people who came in to find shelter. And it's going to take years and years and years to recover in South Florida from the devastation that they have experienced. Many evacuees found shelter here in the Tri-Cities and surrounding areas as our community opened its doors to friends and newcomers alike. Let's hope that as time passes, those south of us can put the pieces back together and begin to move forward once again. Locally, the controversial opioid clinic in Gray finally has an opening date and looks to begin operations early next week. First announced in May 2016, Overmountain Recovery will be the Tri-City's first treatment center authorized to dispense methadone as part of its treatment regimen, which also includes in-depth counseling and social services. The clinic has faced resistance from local Gray community residents and leaders opposed to the idea of addicts driving through their neighborhood after taking methadone. Security is in place, provisions have been made, and the joint venture between Mountain States and ETSU will get underway as planned. In other local healthcare news, the merger between Mountain States and Wellmont is rolling into its third year of tedium and negotiations, but finally, something may be happening this week. Possibly. On Tuesday, Tennessee Department of Health Commissioner John Dreisner will make a decision on whether to allow the merger to continue, which would create ballot health here in our region. Denying the merger would likely send Wilmot searching for another health system to merge with, and the whole process would start all over again. To find out how we got here, why things are as they are, and what to look forward to, read Zach Vance's article online. On Monday, a panel of four judges awarded $15,000 of downtown Strong Grants to four businesses that are soon to be open or are already open in downtown Johnson City. The owners completed the nine-week starters class for small business owners and each made a pitch for their business to the panel. The grand winner was a new business, Skillville, which will be opening this fall at West Market and Montgomery Streets. Skillville was awarded $5,000. This business will offer classes on woodworking, metalwork, refinishing, and much more. Other winners receiving $3,300 grants are Boomtown & Company T-Shirt Company, Blowteak Blow Dry Bar & Boutique, and Barley Waters Craft Beer Market. The Downtown Strong Grant is a project facilitated by the Economic Vitality Team of the JCDA. This weekend has a lot going on in our region, so I suggest if you have the ability whatsoever Get out and be a part of it. Bristol's Rhythm and Roots Reunion kicks off tonight and has become one of the most respected and attended music festivals in the Southeast over its 16 year history. The fourth annual Pride End of Summer Festival will be held Saturday from 10 to 7 at Wing Deer Park Waterside and the second Irwin Elephant Revival will get underway this weekend with the kickoff of a town-wide scavenger hunt to run through next week when the festival's activities begin in earnest. And that's just three of the things going on this weekend which sees a plethora of entertainment value. This has been the Johnson City Press Week in Review. I'm Jared Bentley and I'd like to say thank you very much for watching.